everybody. I thought I'd take this time to show you a quick and easy project using border print fabric. The only special tools that you'll need is a 60 degree ruler. Mine's by Creative Grids, but any of the 60 degree rulers will work. Um, there's a couple different variations and we will go along with that as we're going. I'll show you the couple uh, variations. So let's study a border print. All border prints have different measurements and different sizes and um, it depends on how we want to do this, how we want our finished border to look is where we're going to cut it. You will need approximately one and a half or two inches for the more, um, the more, um, the border print that has more cuts to it. You would actually want two meters of fabric or one and a half for this uh, easy one. And then just depends on what you're going to do. With that one and a half, um, meters. meters, you're going to get two table runners. If you can cut absolutely four pieces exactly the same, you will get four identical runners. Or on some, you might want to cut two large ones and then you would have two little pieces left over to do something else with. So this is the one that we've used. I've already cut a little bit out of it. So I'm just going to go to my sample and show you how to cut a strip. Just straighten this out. I'm going to take my 60 degree ruler and I'm just going to do a little uh, figuring out about where I wanted to cut. What I have decided to do is cut my strips at nine and a quarter. Halfway between this uh, green circle, halfway between this is exactly nine and a quarter inches. I will have four identical pieces that I can make two runners with with the, that one and a half meters of fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my regular ruler and I am going to align my quarter inch and because I started cutting on this side I'm just going to flip it around and continue cutting in the direction that I had before. <clears throat> I am going to cut the nine and a half, I'm sorry, I'm going to cut a nine and a quarter inch strips. I'm going to take my quarter inch mark and I am going to line it up right on the edge of my green. My fabric is straight. If I have to, I can just scratch it and wiggle it so my quarter inch line is identically placed all the way along my strip. And I am just going to cut this, remembering I don't want it to shift, so I'm just going to move my ruler, my hand up my ruler, place this down. Again, I'm lining up my strip with the edge that I've already cut. My dotted line, my quarter inch line is right on that little gold line of my border print. And I'm going to cut these up. Quarter inch. Now I want to cut this exactly nine and a quarter inches wide, so I'm just going to grab a square. I am lining my quarter um, line right on the edge of my strip, my nine and a quarter inch. And you can see on this side, I just have a little bit of pencil trimming to do on this one little part. And I'm just going to go up and I'm just going to trim so my border is exactly nine and a quarter. You can see as I'm cutting along my strip 
if I have to adjust my ruler, if I hold my rotary cutter like this, I always know that this is butted up tight against my rotary cutter. I'm always at the nine and a quarter. So I can adjust the top of my ruler in and out whichever way I need to, to be able to cut the rest of my strip. Now I'm going to repeat that process one more time with this other border. And now we have two identical strips for our table runner. Alrighty, so now I have my two borders and we are going to decide which layout that we would like. So I can take my two borders and you are going to put them back to back so they're mirror images to each other. So I can either set them up this way, where I have the black strip going down the center of my runner, or I can set them up this way, so I'm going to have the black strip that goes all the way around. I prefer this one for this, for this fabric, so um, this is the way that I'm going to do it. So I'm going to take my two strips and now I'm going to close them so they're right on top of each other. The black's on the black, the white's on the white. So I'm going to close it like a book. I'm going to line these edges up so everything is lined up absolutely perfect. I am going to put a couple pins in it. And we're going to cut our edges. So now we're going to use our 60 degree triangle ruler and we are going to cut the ends of our strip. I am going to lay down my ruler with my nine and my quarter inch line right on the edge of my fabric and you can see that it um, butts exactly up at the nine and a quarter on that side. I'm going to cut and these triangles are our only garbage that we're going to have from this. I am going to cut this side. These are the triangles that I want to keep, so I'm just going to cut those or place, place those to the side. I'm going to rotate my ruler so it's upside down. I'm still going to use that nine and a quarter inch line. I am going to align it on the edge of our uh, fabric, and I am going to cut those off. We're going to put these to the side. We can use that for something else later. I'm going to do the identical thing on the other end. So you can see this is the one that I said that I wanted to keep. Here is our uh, border on the other side. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to open these up and we're just going to align them on the edge of our border. And this side as well, align and align. So you can already see how really neat it looks with the little pointed ends. It looks like we've put borders that go all the way around and we're really not trying all that hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew these two triangles to this side these two triangles to that side and then I'm going to sew down the center and then my top is done. Here's a little point on pinning. The points that your eyes are going to see are where stripes come together. If that was off, that's going to be the place that's really going to look awful to your eye. So we want to make sure when we're pinning these, that we align those stripes up perfectly. So 
So you can see that they are totally lined up absolutely perfectly. And that's where I'm going to pin. This is all biased. Be careful it's not going to stretch. Oh, and this is my brand new quilting tool. It's one of the office supply wet things because we're not allowed to lick our fingers anymore and I can't move my fabric. <laughs> it's actually wonderful. So I'm going to take the green stripe. I'm going to line it up on this side. There's also a green stripe here. I'm going to line those up. I'm going to put in a couple more pins and we're going to sew those. When you sew this one on this side and this one on this side, if you're off a teeny tiny in the middle, just trim it ever so slightly and nobody's ever going to know that you trimmed it. Then we're going to take this one, put it back here, again lining up where those stripes are, and sew it together and it's done. And you will have a table runner. that looks like this. So let's go one step further though. We're just going to place this one to the side and we're going to get our other couple border prints, our border stripes. This time I'm going to cut them one at a time. When I cut this size, I like to have probably two meters as opposed to the meter and a half only because that gives me the opportunity to fussy cut. What do I mean by fussy cut? When I place my nine and a quarter inch line on the bottom, you can see that it might not be exactly where what I want showing in my ruler. So I could actually move this, have the opportunity to waste a little bit of fabric and move it back and forth until it gets to where I want it to be. That being said, I'm okay here. So I am going to cut both sides of my triangle. One, two. And I'm going to make two piles and cut my whole strips up. Again, nine and a quarter on the edge. And this one, you can see because we have a large spot there, I might just want to move that over a little bit. And you can see that the piece that I'm cutting is kind of pretty. So we're going to cut this side, and we're going to cut this side. I'm wasting a bit, but maybe we'll find something to do with that later. So now you can see that I'll have that one. And I'm going to continue on cutting back and forth until I have all my strip, my pieces cut from this one strip. Because they're biased, they like to shift. I really do like to trim both sides. So you can see out of the one strip, I was able to cut four in this direction and four in this direction. Let me show you exactly what we're doing now. This table runner is made all of just triangles. So you can see I put one of the one direction of triangles in the center and some on the two ends. There's one, two, three, four, five, six in the center. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we will need eight of one and eight of the other. So right now we're going to make sure that, uh, that's why I stopped right now to see which way I want to do it. So we can play with our squares to find out how we're going to cut the other strip. 
So we can have this one in the center. And then we can have the black on the outside edge. So that's one layout. Or we could do the other one. What I love to do right now is take a picture of it with my phone, with my camera, and then I can actually see what it looks like this way switch it around and then I can flick back and forth and see which uh, layout that I like the best. Or this would be our center circle and this would be our outside edge. I don't know which way I like better. So this one you can see has a beautiful uh, circle in the center that will be all lined in black and then we will have the white on the outside. In this border print we happen to get an even amount of pieces. With border prints of different sizes this is a very important step because you may end up with three in one direction and four in the other and you would have to know which way to cut it. So when I decide on which way I want it, which I think this time I want it this way, I want that dark center circle. So now I know that I have to cut four more and two more. So because I want to cut four more like this, this is the way I'm going to start cutting my next strip because that's the one that I need the most of. So we're just going to put these to the side and we're going to put these to the side. So because I want the white to be first, I am going to cut that one first. So remember, I need four and two of this way. So I'm going to continue on cutting. Do you remember those triangles from the first runner? Remember we had a couple spares? Here they are, which just so happen to be identical to those ones. So we've got lots of triangles that we can play with. I don't have to cut the rest of my strip right now. So let's put them all together to see what we want to do here. So we're going to start with our center circle, all in the black, where we needed six. And we can switch and rotate them whichever way we want. I kind of like that the reindeer are opposite each other. If I wanted to be a little bit more precise, I still have all that other fabric. I could cut a few more triangles here and put them so there would just be balls and maybe not half of a, a deer or whatever. And now we're just going to put these ones. And now I have a lot to play with. So I can decide which ones I want where. So see, you can see that those ones are almost identical, so I'm just going to put one of those on either end. I like the little cardinal. And got some more snowman. I don't want to put a cardinal together. Snowman, cardinal. Or I can just take this one and I can put some ornaments in instead of the cardinals. Again, the same as the other one. I'm going to sew this side together and then this side together and then flip them and sew across the center. 
All you have to do is line up your triangles. They will line up absolutely perfect because all the sides are the same. Again, matching those stripes. Going to the sewing machine and sewing with that perfect quarter inch. I've got another stripe here. I want to make sure that that matches. So I can sew that one together. I can sew this one together. Make sure that we're going to pin the correct side. This one doesn't even match up. So I just want to align it perfectly. Again, remember ladies that these are, um, ladies and gentlemen, that these are bias edges. So we want to pin lots so they don't stretch. And then I have the one left. So I'm going to sew those together. Then I am going to sew these together. And you can see that again, this one doesn't, it goes that way. It doesn't line up. I'm going to sew that one and I'm going to sew this one. Sew them all together. Sew that one all together. Your table runner's done. Six in the center, four on each side. The quilting is absolutely um, easy to do on these runners as well. All you have to do is layer it with your batting and backing. Using your walking foot, use the stripes that are on your fabric and just quilt along them. It'll make it look like it's pieced. If you don't have a long table, here's something to think about. Just make circles. You can also make little circles, so they could be for your end tables. Lots of different things to do with this. It's really kind of fun to play with. So thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you try it. And uh, if you have any questions, um, don't hesitate to find me and I will help you out with those. And don't forget to uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, like the videos. Thanks all. Bye now.